Hey gang, welcome to the Meddling Kids Podcast, a review of all things Scooby-Doo. I am back for week two of the terror. I'm Stephen Pappas. <laughs> and I'm Julie Ken. Today, it's time to talk about clowns in episode 10 of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Bedlam in the Big Top. And uh, as predicted, Stephen had a ref go of it. I did. I Can I just read you my first my first note? Yeah, I'd love that. Because it is a pre-show note that just says, ugh, I don't want to do this because I know it's coming. <laughs> and uh, I was not disappointed. Yeah, um, you know, it wasn't as bad as I thought it could have been. It would have been way creepier if the clowns, like, at first looked nice and then slowly grew terrifying. So I love the Powerpuff Girls, and there <laughs> is a really horrible clown episode with a really nice clown who then turns evil, and it's it's bad. I Let me just say. I remember that episode. Oh, oh, yeah. It's like a really, really happy clown, and um, yeah, I forget what happens in the very end, but it's like doesn't even happen have a happy ending like that clown stays a villain character and i just it's remember all black him and... used to scare me as a kid yeah and him is very clown like i get it i get it well bedlam in the big top is um as predicted clowns scary yucky but um the title bedlam i thought would have to do with like insanity and it didn't so you know that's okay but there's also some bigotry in it just to warn everyone so it starts off with a little bit of really problematic visuals so we're at a circus at dusk of course and we see a clown looking down from a hill and nope. he's an in- instant instant no instant yeah. no Right off the bat, at least we get to see the clown right away, Steven. It's not hiding in your closet like but I wasn't. Ex- I wasn't expecting it. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be that, like, forward. So, like, I'm uh-huh. watching. I'm like, okay, cool. All right, the clown is coming, but I have to prepare. And, like, I'm not even – I don't have time to prepare before it's just like, nope, here's the demon clown. Like – See, I much, sorry, I'm reaching over to unplug a thing. I much prefer that than suspense. I don't like suspense or movie pressure, as my da- daughter calls it. Well, here's the uh, thought. Just don't okay. show the clown at all. <laughs> Have, uh, just know there's a clown and not see it. Isn't exactly. that worse? Also, my daughter says that clowns are her arch nemeses. So I like she, your daughter. Yeah, I know. You guys have a lot in common. You have a, a lot in common with all of my children, which says a lot about everyone in this relationship. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, this clown, he's in red and black, and he has mean eye makeup, if you know what I mean. Like it, his eyebrows are like over, or like it's all black around his eyes and like points to make him look especially fierce. And don't worry, listeners, I've got little... Uh, clips to put on Facebook and Twitter for you so you can see. And yellow eyes, of course, because villains have yellow eyes in this series. And again, the purplish blue skin, which I mentioned last time that I don't I don't know why, but these villains, I'm going to have to start keeping track. I'll do some uh, basic statistics to see the skin color and what that means. I feel like their circulatory system is not working well. <gasps> Maybe that's it. And maybe that's what's causing some of the insanity, perhaps? Hmm, interesting. Well, okay. So meanwhile, this clown is watching a a pair of very interesting individuals on a tandem bicycle. You know, one that has like two seats, one in front and one in back. On the back is like a strong man looking guy in a singlet, you know, like a man unitard, a leotard kind of thing. And a... (laughs) little person and when I say little person I I believe well I don't know if this individual has dwarfism or if he's extremely short we we don't know although in the show I believe they do call him little man and a max the midget and midget is not a word that we like to use anymore right so he uses that for himself yeah, he does use it himself. He owns it, but I don't know if we can really say that. Well, this fictional character owned it, therefore it's okay for us to use oh, it. Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying we later. should by yeah, any yeah. means because at one point, literally, Fred does say, "Where's the little man?" And I'm like, right. Ugh. "Ugh, yeah, exactly." So, um, why don't we just call him Max because that is his name? I like it, Fred. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> we see Max and the strong man on the bike. All of a sudden, their tandem bike breaks and 
the and Max loses control because he was in the front kind of driving. And so does a strong man. However, even though the bike breaks, they're now kind of riding it like two unicycles, which is very impressive. And then they crash into each other. And we're supposed to somehow assume that our villain has made this happen from watching from afar, perhaps with mystical powers. And they crash. And the mystery machine sees the crash. And they stop to see if they can help. Which is the first time I think that they're actually like, oh my gosh, someone might be hurt. Let's stop and help. Right. Not just, hey, we saw a man walk into a house. That's creepy. Let's go break in. No, this is like actual good citizen behavior. Well done, children. Proud. Anyway, they uh, Max had flown into a tree but from the impact, and he falls off onto Scooby's back, and Scooby is the hero dog. And then Max rides on Scooby's back over to the other kids. And they call him a cow pony? A, a, a what now? A cow pony? Sure. I, I don't know why, but it, it cow pony, yeah. Um, and they and compliment. we're Googling. Yeah, and they call him that for like three minutes and just congratulate him for a really, really, really long time. It is um, a small, fast, agile horse trained, trained for use by cowhands in herding cattle. Oh, it's a real thing. Okay, I thought I had a typo or like autocorrect or something. Okay, so anyway, then we get to formally meet Max and Sam the Strongman. And Max says this was not an accident. He's quite accusatory, actually. He says someone broke their bike and that they were quitting that jinxed circus. There's a lot of things about jinxes in this series, I'm recalling. Um, but Max and Sam are are confident that they can fix this bicycle and ride off to their destiny. So they presumably live happily after a- ever after because we never see them again. Yeah, we do. Do we? Oh, yeah, we sure do, don't we? Sorry, my mistake. Okay. Gosh, um- <laughs> since when am I the one that paid more attention? Come on, Julie. <laughs> You're right. I forgot about that. Okay. So (laughs) Fred is really intrigued. He wants to find a jinxed circus. Yes, sir. Bob is what Fred (laughs) has to say. (laughs) Yeah. He's, he's thrilled about this. Um, So they want to go find out the clown is overhearing this and he laughs evilly. So we know he is involved somehow. They meet Mr. Barnstorm. Now, Mr. Barnstorm is a handsome dude in a green and purple riding outfit. Is Barnstorm supposed to be like Barnum? Oh! Because I was sitting there like, is it going to be like, and here's my partner, Schmaley. <laughs> like, oh, so it's Barnstorm and Schmaley's circus. Gotcha. Like, I did not put that together. I'm GB Barnstorm. Like, is is this like Andrew Lloyd Webber, how he stole from the last Scooby-Doo one? Did Barnum and Bailey steal from this episode? They were like a jinxed circus. That's a great idea. We sure. can abuse elephants. Oh. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's going to Abuser. a sad place. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. That's me. <laughs> how you doing, <laughs> folks? <laughs> okay, so Mr. Barnstorm, he um, also has a top hat and a bow tie, um, and he's wearing a very similar outfit to what Scooby was wearing at the end of the last episode, by the way. Um, anyway, he says this is the last straw when he hears from the kids about what happened to Max and Sam and how they're leaving. Now that they've left, the circus won't open because it's haunted by a ghost clown. Oh, are you kidding me? Like, that it- was my first thought of like, oh, it's not just a clown. Oh, it's a ghost clown. Like, the only way this could be worse for me is they're like, mm-hmm. oh, it's being haunted by a ghost clown snake doll. Like, ugh. With birds that fly out of its sleeves ugh, or something. It sprouts wings and... Oh. Yep. A clown was not enough. A ghost was not enough. It needed to be a ghost clown. Oh. Yeah. Why did it? Why? Why? <clears throat> well, we hear some examples of his bad behavior. Some trapeze wires have come undone and other weird thing like the lion started acting scared. And those are the only <laughs> two examples we hear. So sure. Um, all right. Uh, during all this exposition, of course, Scooby gets into hijinks and he sees a shadow and he starts following that shadow. Anyway, the kids are like, OK, well, we may as well leave. Um. Me, I'm thinking, well, the clown can't be Mr. Barnstorm because 
we just saw the mysterious shadow go away. So presumably that's our villain. And the villain was like just up on a hill. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it might not actually be the first human we saw. Whereas usually the first human you meet is the villain. Oh, I totally still thought it was. Like I was like, I had this elaborate scheme in my head. Oh, yeah? of like, oh, he's sad because people are leaving the circus. So he's trying to save the circus by like... I don't I don't know. I had an elaborate scheme. It didn't work. But I will no. say, watching that bike fall apart, heading toward a moving van earlier on, and a couple things that are going to happen throughout the episode, this seems like the first villain that legitimately wants to hurt people. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Like, this villain is not just diabolical in like a criminal minds kind of way, but like actually quite dangerous. Right. We'll get into it. So stay tuned, kids. This is a scary one. Okay, so... They, the kids are like, yeah, let's go off. They drive off, but don't realize that Scooby's not in the back of the van. Well, Um, he's just a great Dane. You can misplace them so easily. (laughs) And let me just say the mystery machine looks empty without Scooby in it. Mm -hmm. You can fill it with weird teenagers, but without that big old doggy, it's just an empty van. Anyway, he's busy being hypnotized by a clown back at the circus. And this clown, ghost clown, let's just call him the ghost clown for now. He, sure. He's got real weird motives because, uh, I, I mean, actually, I don't even remember what was his motive in the whole thing. Just he was a vengeful guy. Well, we'll come back to it. But I anyway, remember he, his motive, com- motive, but yeah, yeah, it's basically vengeance. Can we just, can we not call him ghost clown? Can we call sure. him something tame like, Murray? like Beatrice? Beatrice? Beatrice Murray. Yeah, not Karen, because poor Karen's have been maligned so much, and is this adulting? Oh, that, yeah, we uh, had the first that, Karen ever Karen, join our group today, and I was so scared that she was going to be like, why does everyone hate me? And I'm like, no, we we call mental illness Karen, not you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's code in the Is This Adulting podcast and Facebook Besties group, which is a great group, that when they want to talk about their mental illness, they just call it Karen. And now we have a Karen in the group. So poor Karen. Anyway, so not Karen, Beatrice. Um, all right. So um, Beatrice, I'll, I'll work with that. I can do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Beatrice the ghost clown. Beatrice the ghost clown. That does sound better. Yeah, it's nice. Um, I'm I'm just imagining B from um, uh, Golden Girls. B Arthur. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's who it is. That's that's what it is. It's B Arthur. It's Maud. She can play any role. She's amazing. Okay, so he, Beatrice is hypnotizing Scooby and saying you're gonna be brave and do a high wire act. And there's some rhyme like Beatrice always talks in rhymes, which I don't get, and I didn't bother writing them down. Sorry, kids. Uh, so again, really strange motivation. Uh, the kids come back to find Scooby um, and Shaggy and Velma go into the big top because they're searching around there and they see Scooby on the high wire doing a walk and he's amazing. Oh, it's like, very impressive. It's very impressive. So Beatrice, I mean, are you trust, if she's just trying to, if he, well, still call him a he, I think, because I think Beatrice seems to be like masculine identifying, I guess. Right. It's hard to say. Anyway, B. Oh, we should just use they. Let's just use a gender. Ne- this is going to get so confusing. Okay. So. The ghost clown. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Stephen. <laughs> Beatrice, the ghost clown, um, makes Scooby do some flips and stuff. But what is the motivation here? If Beatrice just wants to kill a dog, there's other ways of doing it that are less complicated than hypnotizing. Anyway, uh, it, and the clown is doing all these weird hand gestures. And I'll, I'll post these because it looks like gang signs or something to me and then I'm wondering so this is a topic I know zero about is, is the clown a juggalo is this juggaloism <laughs> oh gosh I don't don't get me started on juggalos uh, mostly we, we, because they'll come for me oh you probably live in a part of the country where there might be a higher proportion of juggalos than in hippie Olympia I, Washington I went to high school with a lot of ICP fans so Okay. Yeah, I I looked it up on Wikipedia once. I was fascinated. It's like oh, it's a very this? interesting culture. Yeah, and I'm just not familiar with it at all. And so that's why I was like, is that what this thing is? Is it? I mean, is this at all like it? Maybe he is the third lost member of Insane Clown Posse. Uh, well, uh, Bedlam. Yes. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he's their dad because he's from the '60s. 
Mm, anyway, interesting. interesting. Okay, so Velma and Shaggy pull over a trampoline and to to try to you know just in case Scooby falls. And um, so Shaggy's going to be kind of manning this trampoline, and Velma starts to go up the ladder. The clown releases Scooby from the hypnosis, and Scooby is super freaked out. It's really sad. Poor boy. Velma tosses him an umbrella to help him balance, but like yeah. to grab the umbrella, he had to remove one of his paws from the high wire. It I don't know. It didn't seem like a well thought out plan. No. Where did she have the umbrella from anyway? But he uses it like a parachute. Um, and so it helps him co- come down. And then he falls onto the trampoline and the trampoline's really strong and it bounces him back up. And when he bounces down, when he hits the bottom, it makes Shaggy and Velma go up. And so this happens for, I'd say, a good five minutes. They're just bouncing each other up and down over and over and over again. This it's is a one while. Of the, it's a while. This is one of those bits where they probably put in their notes, if we need to stretch out the episode, just put it on repeat. Kids are dumb. They won't mind. Increase the laugh track. Um, again, we do love this show, Scooby Addict. Um, <laughs> but we can make fun of this kind of stuff. Okay. Anyway, Scooby falls into a, a box and gets caught in a bunch of balloons and falls up in like the style of the movie up. Like, literally up. And so he's going up. Ridiculously complicated trap here. So he's going up in the air. Um, his little paws are just dangling down. And then the cl- the clown starts shooting the balloons with darts while laughing maniacally the whole time to try to make Scooby fall. And again, this takes a really, really long time. What is Very the clown's? Very dangerous. Very dangerous. And what's the clown's motivation for any of this? Because if all he wants to do is cause trouble, I think having a floating dog in the big top is going to be a lot of trouble, right? He doesn't actually need to toss down the balloons i mean just think of all the fecal matter that's going to be everywhere in bits of urine from you know the dog being scared um anyway <laughs> that's that's one way to take it <laughs> that's what i'm thinking. floating great dane uh, believe me the biggest danger there is being right under the business side okay scooby <laughs> falls into a different trampoline um held by velma and shaggy okay meanwhile fred and daphne are following the ghost somehow to a costume area or Beatrice the ghost clown sorry Stephen Freddy and I'm yes I'm calling him Freddy because that's what Daphne calls him in this episode he gets pushed into a trunk by the ghost clown and Velma gets hypnotized I mean Daphne gets hypnotized and I'm you know sorry I don't know if I'm just over Whatever, but I'm just thinking, okay, she's getting hypnotized probably for sexual purposes here because why would he like shove Fred away and just use Daphne? Uh, and- <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to, to I, take that back? I'm sorry. No, no, I'm just friendly. interested in that because the thing he says is like so condescending. What does because, he say? Like, what he, I don't remember exactly what he says, but he's like, basically, for once you will use your brain. And I was like, oh my God, like. It's not what oh, he says, yeah, but it's essentially like for once you'll think like, and you'll actually be smart. And I was like, this seems really, is- really, really not okay. Yeah, especially with what he has her do. And this is why I say for sexual purposes, because all of a sudden she's in different clothes. Mm-hmm. Right. So when did she change? Thank you very much. Um, she d- So anyway, the other three are still searching. And all of a sudden they see Daphne on a unicycle in a completely different outfit. So, and remember, this is a teenager. So, this dude needs to seriously go to perv jail. Anyway, they're like, she she's on a unicycle. She can't even ride a bicycle. So, or bicycle. Bicycle, yeah. Bicycle. <laughs> Poor Daphne. She can't even ride a bike. Poor lady. Um, anyway, they try to wake her. They use horns and a net. Nothing's working. Shaggy and Scooby get stuck in some instruments, and Daphne still doesn't wake up. And then she rides out of the big top into a menagerie. Um on to a bunch of elephants. And this is why I was talking about elephant abuse because I felt really bad for these elephants. And the elephants are like using their tails and trunks to make a big long chain. And she's riding over the tops of them um, on this unicycle. Logical. Um, logical. Yeah, she is very impressive. I'll give her that. Like, I don't think hypnotism usually can also give you the muscle memory to do this kind of stuff. So this clown is, uh, this ghost clown Beatrice is amazing. Like, this is some mad skills here. Um I'm a little concerned about PETA getting hold of this episode. Mm. Scooby brings water to an elephant to splash her. And um, 
it's pretty cool that he can speak to elephants here, but his language must be a little off because the elephant actually splashes Scooby instead, but then also uh, splashes Daphne and she wakes up. She is very confused to see herself in new clothes, but not nearly as horrified as I would be. Like, someone changed your clothes, dude, like you're a living doll. No? <sighs> anyway, don't, okay. Don't say doll. Don't. I'm, I'm okay. still recovering from the oh, last episode. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Also, again, what's his motivation for any of this? Um, somehow, they find her old clothes, and she's perfectly dry and fine. Fred says the only way to figure out what's going on is to ask Beatrice the ghost clown their selves. And after the commercial, we're here, we'll hear about Fred's latest trap. Hey, Megan. Yeah, Jake? Did you know that the author of The Scarlet Letter had to shovel poop for a living? No. But do you know that the author of The Handmaid's Tale helped make long-distance sex toys? Who do you think she tested this on? Of course I knew about it. Fair enough. You know all these things and more. Like the difference between Moby Dick and Mocha Dick. If you listen to our show, Oh No Lit Class, a podcast where comedy meets literature and things get nerdy, weird, and maybe even a little bit sexy. It's all on Oh No Lit Class. Dead authors, fresh takes, and the epilogues you never knew you needed. Listen now at onolitclass.com. This is the perfect trap, kids. Once one of us gets the ghost clown, to chase him into this cage. And it's like an old-timey, like, zoo car where I guess there's doors on either side. A car, like, that you would see on a train, okay? Right. Our man gets in, ghost clown chases in, our man gets out through the other door, and ta-da, we've got Beatrice trapped. So, sure. Flawless. Um, mm-hmm. who, who, who is our man, though? I mean, it couldn't be Scooby-Doo, like every episode. <laughs> The fastest one of us, Scooby-Doo. But oh no, Scooby-Doo has a sprained ankle. He's just faking it. Wait, he Um, was faking that? He was totally faking it. Although it is reasonable that he would have a sprained paw from falling into trampolines over and over and over. I don't think that's good. Also just being up on his hind legs and trying to grip a tightrope with his paws. Like that seems very unlikely. So yeah, I mean, he could be hurt. Hip dysplasia is a real phenomenon for these large breeds, by the way. It is. Okay, so Daphne pulls out a giant hero sandwich, which looks amazing considering her clothes were taken off her and put back on and somehow was in her pocket. Very impressive. Um, Shaggy says, hey, he really wants this sandwich. He's like, I was a track man. I want it. Because not only is Shaggy an expert gymnast, and what did we say last time he did really well to? Oh, pizza spinner. He's also yep. a track man. So Scooby and Shaggy agreed to both go find the, be the trapeze. No, trap Eat the people who are trapped and uh, then split the sandwich. <laughs> yeah, trapeze can be confusing in this episode. Exactly. Thank you. Um, but, oh, no, Shaggy gets hypnotized to do a lion tamer's act. Wh- which is, again, so dangerous. Yes, right? Like, these are not just goofs and, like, mayhem causing tricks. This is no, real it's, dangerous stuff. It's dangerous, and especially because the lions, a lot of the lions they use in circuses are older lions. And here's a lesson that Stephen learned while living briefly in Kenya. Okay, Older lions like to om nom nom humans because oh my God, they you learned this firsthand. Um, yes, because I was actually stalked by one. Um, <gasps> yeah, I know, right? Oh my gosh, you epic lived. reveal! Oh my gosh, I have gosh. lived a life. I was charged by an elephant. I've stalked. I've I fought a baboon. Um, no, Are I you didn't serious? actually fought a, okay. fight a baboon, but I was charged by an elephant and I was stalked by a lion. Um. Oh gosh no yeah like lions like old lions are like well we're too slow to catch like antelope or water buffalo things like that you know what we can catch people because people are (laughs) real slow and steven also (laughs) real slow so he's looking like some good prey and so no yeah i was actually at a lodge like in the samburu region of kenya which is like way 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 out there like it's six hours from civilization and like Like, we went to buildings where, like, were three walls under a tree. Like, but we were staying at this, like, resort lodge out there, kind of, because they had one place in town that they could put us up. 
uh, that wasn't a family's home. And like, we had to be like walked to our rooms, like by armed Holy guards smoke. with, a, Oh my gosh. With rifles in case lions came for us. And like, I was out there on the phone, like trying to rearrange flights. Cause we had to leave. Cause there was some political unrest. Anyway, <laughs> oh we had to God. leave because yeah, no, there was an assassination in the Capitol. They're like, you need to leave now. And we were like, cool. And so I was trying to rearrange flights and I'm out there on the phone with my mom. Cause I don't have a computer. So she's having to rearrange flights. And, <laughs> uh this is I amazing. see these like eyes like staring at me from from the bushes and I'm oh just like that gosh. seems kind of weird I'm sure it's just a trick of the light so like I take oh a couple gosh. steps to the side and then like I see the eyes shift oh my gosh and like then, in a Scooby-Doo painting like in a painting in a Scooby-Doo yes. episode and so like I and I'm still just like trying to convince myself like this can't be real and so, like, I take another step, and then, like, they shift again, and then I hear this, like, guttural, like, like, like a cat purr, like, growl, weird sound. Oh, no. And so, I start beating on the door to, um, actually, the room my wife, then girlfriend, but was staying in to be like, let, let me in, let me in. And they all made fun of me. <gasps> and like laughed at me because they're like, that didn't happen. And then I told one of the guys who was one of our leader, like, um, not leaders, but like chaperone. He wasn't even a chaperone. He was like a, he was a, a native Kenyan who was kind of one of our guides while we were oh, there. Cool. And, um, I was like, so this, I think happened last night and everybody's like, ha ha, Steven's just making stuff up. And he goes, Oh no, that happens around here. Like he said, odds are it was either a very old lion or a hyena. And I was like, Oh, so neither one I want to mm. mess with. And they're like, mm. he's like, no, no, probably not. So Yeah. So in summary, Stephen has lived some real live adventures. I have. I'll tell you about them sometimes. Sorry, I we we no. do host a Scooby Doo podcast. The lion thing amazing. just made me think about that. Well, I can understand why. Uh, what I don't understand is how you can survive things like that and then be afraid of the marionette that's right behind you in your closet right now. Look, uh, why you gotta door. do that? Why you gotta do that? Uh, I showed sorry, you the sorry, marionette sorry, sorry. and you were scared too. <laughs> I was, but it was looking right at me, super creepy, even with though it its no eyes. face. It with its no face, exactly. Okay, let me let me tell you what happens next in this episode. Yeah, let's let's um, continue. <laughs> let's continue. <laughs> okay, um, so basically, Shaggy is doing what Stephen had to do, which was defend himself against this lion. Um, and by the way, if this ghost had this skill, or ghost, if Beatrice really had these skills, she could be making bank doing shows and things because this is pretty incredible. Oh, yeah, or he's, just he's taming a lion and he's never done it before. And I want to I want to throw right. some. So throw some accusations in the direction of the Walt Disney Company. Hmm. Um, actually, no, I don't because they will come for me. They're they very litigious. Yeah. Um, I just found it interesting that did you notice what he was calling the lion? Simba. He was calling the lion Simba. And I was like, this is like 30 years before the Lion King. But Simba is also the Swahili, Swahili word for word. lion. So it, it makes sense. But like yeah. if he had been like Mufasa, then I would have been like, okay, something's up. Yeah, 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 yeah. The only reason I knew that was the Swahili word for lion is because you mentioned it on one of your other episodes once. Oh, did I? I learned something. Yeah, all the Lion the King show. characters are named yeah. after Swahili words. Um, okay, so uh, here uh, Shaggy is making a lot of whip noises, and he's like holding a chair and shouting, ha ha, ho ho, hey hey. It's really weird. He looks very <laughs> confident, though, because he's hypnotized. Oh, yeah. Why doesn't Beatrice hypnotize a banker to give Beatrice all the money from the bank, right? Anyway, um, vengeance is a stronger motive, I guess. All right, so Scooby steals the whistle that the clown was about to use to wake Shaggy, and Scooby uses it to wake Shaggy instead, um, and Shaggy escapes through the door. Scooby could have used lion language, I suppose, to talk to this elderly lion, but no. <laughs> anyway, the clown, or Beatrice the ghost clown, is now chasing them, and they lead Beatrice into the trap. But it's really weird because Beatrice is flying towards the trap or kind of like floating. And then once Beatrice is in the trap, because Beatrice does seem to be in there the way they had intended, you know, gated on both sides, Beatrice is again floating and then not there at all. Ooh. 
Now, Shaggy remembers the gold coin used to hypnotize him because some mention of money made him think of that. This time, when the clown tries to hypnotize all the kids, they use mirrors because hypnotism works just like Medusa's power and the clown accidentally hypnotizes themselves. Now, would he not have, like, had a moment where he looks at them while he's doing it and goes, oh, I should oh, stop. shoot, maybe I should not be doing this. Or they're not paying attention, so I'm just wasting my time. It, it, no, I think it's it, it clearly, as all of this is canonical, when you hypnotize someone, it's like you start down a path and you can't stop. It's like rolling down a roller coaster and it just keeps going and going. Once you start that hypnotism, no matter what, whoever sees it, it's automatically affected forever until okay. the hypnotizer stops. And so when Beatrice tried to hypnotize the kids to think they were, what, chimpanzees? Yes. And they used mirrors. It, 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 Beatrice's fate was sealed in that moment because for the rest of this episode and for the rest of Beatrice's life, Beatrice thinks Beatrice is a chimpanzee. Uh, they unmask Beatrice and uh, Mr. Barnstorm identifies him as a new character we have never met, Harry the Hypnotist. He used to have an act with us, but we caught him for stealing and sent him to prison. And the kids explain <laughs> he used a balloon copy of himself to trick us. I know I carry a balloon copy of myself in my back pocket just for such an occasion. You ought to, and it needs to be remote controlled so that you can make it inflate and deflate from far away, which is what remote control balloons are so challenging to like steer and make do what you want, though. Yeah, it's true. I mean, nowadays with drone technology, it's like a little bit better, but still. um, Still. Yeah, it fooled these kids. So, sometime later, after the events of this episode, uh, the big kids, meaning everyone except, except Shaggy and Scooby, are in the audience at the big top to see a quote-unquote big surprise that Shaggy and Scooby have been working on. We see Samson the Strongman lift a really big weight, and Scooby and Shaggy pop out of the weights, and everyone cheers because it's a happily ever after, except that um, Beatrice is somewhere in prison thinking that Beatrice is a chimpanzee for the rest of their life. No, no. I didn't realize that, that never snapped out of it like they never they never snapped him back out of it nope but i mean maybe beatrice is happier this way it's not a bad existence i mean actually beatrice did a lot of bad stuff so no i don't hope so i I don't hope that beatrice is happier this way i (laughs) i don't know i mean once you're changing now i just think of beatrice as a chimpanzee i mean should chimpanzee beatrice have to suffer for the crimes committed by human ghost clown beatrice no, no, I think that that makes no sense at all. I think Chimpanzee Beatrice probably has a good heart. Yeah, um, Wait, probably, presumably. Exactly, just wants to, I don't know what chimpanzees do. I was trying to think of like a good, a good, good little thing there. No jokes, the jokes are out. Abort, abort, get me out of here. Maybe that's like, are chimpanzees apes? I'm trying to think back to our ape man episode. Yes, okay. Think, yes, I think chimpanzees. Okay, somehow are apes. there's some crossover there. Oh, which leads me to our meddling question of the week. What would you like to see a crossover with the Scooby Show? This is a question from me this time because I know there's lots of good crossovers. There's Batman crossover, Harlem Globetrotters were always my favorites as a kid. What crossover for the Scooby Gang would you like, Stephen? Well, there's been so many. Yes. Batman would have been up there for me. Big Batman fan. Mm-hmm. Um, I always... And they did one with Corn at one point in the 90s. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Not even joking. That happened. Corn um, was on there. How about Insane Clown Posse? It's just some ICP action. Um, you know, I, I I see all that, and I'm like, there's they do some cool stuff. They do a lot now, and I kind of dread when we get to this era of Scooby. Mm-hmm. Um there have been like seven to eight Scooby films now where they cross over with the WWE. Really? Yeah. And so we're going to have to watch a, a good bit of that, but that's, that is literally Hmm. years from now that we will have to unleash that fresh hell upon ourselves. So if I had to pick any property (laughs) that I want to see the Scooby gang involved in that universe. um, I mean, I think there's one clear answer and that is game of Thrones. Oh, 
because <laughs> I would watch that so I, oh hard. Oh my gosh, I would obsess over that. I thought you were going to say Star Wars, but you're right. Game well, of Thrones. Well, I think they've probably crossed over at some point with Star Wars. I don't know. But, well, now that Disney, oh, no, I, Disney and Warner Brothers are like the two streams that can never cross. But I think before Disney owned, I want to say there was an episode of A Pup Named Scooby-Doo. Oop, getting into some deep canon Ooh. now. Um, <laughs> I want to say there was an episode of A Pup Named Scooby-Doo that was kind of themed around a Star Wars episode. We should know by like year 2019 or 2020. <laughs> yeah, by the time we get to there, we should we should know whether or not that was a thing. But I think it happened. So I'm going to need to see Game of Bones. Which oh would be the gosh. Scooby-Doo, not that well. Okay, that also sounds like it might be an adult film. Um, <laughs> that is not that is not what I'm implying. Um, I take it back. There's that's where be I a took different, it. I just automatically assumed that's what you meant. There's got to be a different way. Well, I mean, the show already <laughs> basically is. Um, so I'm trying to think of like, like characters I want to see, like, interact with scooby like i'd like to see some like Arya hanging out with scooby i think that'd be good Ooh. um i think i don't know if you watch game of thrones oh yeah um, of course okay like okay so nymeria spoilers for season one of game of thrones it's been seven <laughs> years get over it um i'm really bad about spoilers and i'm kind of hateful about it um so she has to get rid of her direwolf and she yes. like runs nymeria off and like basically does the like go on can't you see i don't love you no more and, like, exactly. Those runs dire her wolves. Off. So like what if Scooby is her new like dire wolf essentially? Except I don't want that because the dire wolves always die. Yeah. Which is a really dark thing. And so I'm not sure I'm ready to see Scooby get beheaded by some sort of oh, Lannister oh. army. I'm not ready. No, I know for sure I'm not ready for that. But like I think like Shaggy would fit in well with the Tarleys. Like, he has a very <laughs> Samwell Tarly vibe to him. Um, totally. I know that Fred is definitely a Lannister oh with my the gosh. blonde hair and the thirst for blood. Yep. Um, Daphne would probably yeah. be a Tyrell, mm-hmm. even though the Tyrells... Well, no, we're not going to go there. That is that is fresh spoilers. Yeah, no, I, I will no, not no go there. spoilers there. Um, and Velma, Velma. Velma would just be a maester somewhere at the Citadel, probably. Yeah. Even though I don't that. know if they let Lady Maesters be a thing. Yeah. Um, so Velma, who knows what Velma, maybe Velma will surprise us all and be a very like Brienne of Tarth character. Uh, nothing is as it seems. Anyway. anyway <laughs> I was going to go with something animated back to the Powerpuff Girls, which is another one of my favorites. Um, there was a Powerpuff Girl episode where they got changed into dogs. Um, but still, I could definitely see them getting Mojo Jojo turning the Powerpuff Girls back into dogs and them joining up with Scooby for a while and helping solve some mysteries. And they would totally take Fred down a few notches, by the way. Oh, for sure. I'm trying to picture like a battle between Fred and the Powerpuff Girls. Meanwhile, Scooby and Shaggy are off fighting Fuzzy Lumpkins. Ah, that would be so cute. Okay, well, if you have a meddling question, please email us at meddlingkidspod at gmail.com, tweet us at meddlingkidspod, or join us on Facebook. Yeah, and thanks so much for joining us. We want to say thanks to Dave Says Tay for mm-hmm. the use of the song Night Surfing as our theme music. I dance every single time I'm editing. Mm-hmm. It is a good song. Be sure to check out Stephen and Chris on Is This Adulting, which I talked about a lot this episode, so check it out. It's great. And my other podcast is called The Station Wagon Podcast, where my brother and I give up something we take for granted. We are giving up now using our dominant hands. So I am trying to be a lefty, and he's trying to be a righty, and it, um, it it's pretty hard. No, thank you. Yeah. So anyway, we'll talk all about why and the science of that and stuff. But that used to be really common, like making lefties be righties. Which is anyway. cruel. Yeah. Did you say cool or cruel? Cruel, cruel. No, no, not cruel. cool. Okay. I'm not, okay, I'm okay, not okay. down with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, our next episode, episode 11, is going to be called A Gaggle of Galloping Ghosts. And I don't get why you're going to be nervous about this one. It's about beautiful ghost horses, I'm Well, assuming. here's the thing, Julie. Uh, if yeah. there's one thing in this world, as far as animals, that I'm more terrified of than birds, it's horses. Oh. <laughs> um, because they are large, they could destroy me, and they're always looking at you out of that little side eye that they got there, and they're <laughs> they just always eye. creeping on you with the side eye, and I am not down with that. So, little scared of the horses. One of these days, we'll get to a Scooby episode with something that terrifies you, but until that time, um, I think it's just going to be me complaining about the things that terrify me every week. Well, 
as my husband Olaf likes to say, do- horses are just really big dogs. It, I don't. He, I don't think that that is scientifically accurate. It, it's not. That's what he told our toddler, and I was really upset with him. I was like, "Don't say that." And he's like, "And cats are just really small dogs." Um, no, no. no. Again. Cats are very small lions. I'll give you that. <laughs> okay. So, also, listeners, if you don't mind, it'd be awesome if you could review us on iTunes, like underscore Odd did. Um, Odd said. This is the podcast I've been waiting for. And I love this review. It's a really nice long review that's very complimentary, especially because Odd points out that we get things wrong about the show all the time, but oh, it's yeah. still entertaining. And heck, we are not, we don't have our PhDs in Scooby studies. So that's accuracy isn't exactly what we're going for, but we do love your corrections. Feel free to get in touch with us online um, on Facebook and Twitter at Meddling Kids Pod and let us know what we got wrong. Like, for example, if it's not Athens, Georgia, but some other remote part of Georgia, happy to know. And that's it. Are are you going to read the review? Oh, should I? Uh, Oh, yeah. Well, let me see. Okay. Uh, I didn't know if you wanted to. You don't have to. It's real nice and long. I just thought I would leave it there. But. Oh, okay. We we, we can just carry on. This is this is a garbage truck on fire. So. Oh, 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 this wasn't stuff you were planning on cutting. Good thing I wasn't cursing and stuff. La la la, not that I ever curse, listeners. Okay. No. Garbage truck on never. fire. Okay. On back to you, Stephen. <laughs> back to me. <laughs> all right. Well, with all of that that just happened for your entertainment, um, that is going to do it for us here on Meddling Kids Pod this week. Uh, per usual, you know, like we said on the last episode, peek behind the curtain, we recorded two back to back. So again been a just a heck of a busy (laughs) week and so i have not had time to keep tabs on most of you uh except for jess from kiwi crimes you i'm watching because i I, there i I don't trust you there's something up i'm watching you yes yes but uh other than that yeah were were you trying to do the accent yeah i can't do it i i try to imitate her every time i i just listen to that podcast and try to repeat everything she says because i i desperately want to be able to do her accent but even her name i can't say Jeez. I cannot. Just try it. She's... Try one time. Jeez. No, I don't want to offend her. She's such a lovely human being. Jesus. Okay, go on, G- go on. It, you're just, it sounds like you're just saying like Jesus without another S in it. Like Jesus. <laughs> Would... Was she Jesus the whole time? Uh, Who knows? Under that mask. Twist ending. <laughs> um. Anyway, so aside from me keeping tabs on Jess, um, I don't know what the rest of you did this week. Um, it could have been something terrible. It could have been something great. Just uh, remember, I'm always watching, but you would have gotten away with it if it weren't for us meddling kids. I hope no one's charged by lions this week, but if you are, we'll hear about it next time. Yay! Something that happened in real life! 